Welcome back after I hope was a wonderful weekend for everyone. The 12th day of April is winding down today and I have a great deal of news to go along with the end of it this evening. We'll back up to one of the reports that I had on Friday where police were still searching for a man who had fired a handgun at what now we have learned to be two women charged with attempted murder. He's been arrested since. A number of other arrests as well. Law enforcement in the area have been busy over the past three days, going back to, <clears throat> excuse me, this past Friday. For instance, a woman caught with drugs and shoplifting, $3 and some odd cents worth of goods when she had over $150 in her pocket. All of that and much more in those reports. A serious vehicle fire earlier today in a really bad spot. Very remote, about as far out as you can get from any fire department. And we'll have just a brief report on a two-vehicle accident that authorities were on the scene of just about an hour or so ago. Your local COVID update uh, will come later on in the week, but some big announcements in our state COVID update. And that's where we're going to begin tonight's show on the COVID front. The governor announcing a way out for everyone. If everyone decides to take it, and it will take everyone working together to do so. Before that, he did, however, highlight the COVID-19 pandemic coronavirus response and relief supplemental appropriations act of 2021 in which funeral expenses for those who have lost loved ones due to the coronavirus will be covered by FEMA. There's a phone number, 844, actually a toll-free number, 1-800-462-7585 that you can call and begin the entire process. I'll get that number up on the community calendar. We'll announce that for the next several days. You know, we've got um, 21 COVID-related deaths, at least here in McGoffa County, more than that to our neighbors, for our neighbors in Johnson, I believe, and in Floyd County as well. So that affecting and helping a great deal of families. Before we go on to our local headlines, though, let's continue on the COVID front. And today's announcement from Governor Bashir, where he presented an exit strategy, a way out, a way not to be free of COVID, but a way for us all to be free of a lot of its constraints and restraints that have been placed upon us. But there's only one way to achieve that, and that's through the vaccine, where the governor says that they have set a threshold. And if Kentucky collectively meets that threshold, things are going to change certainly by the summer. It's 2.5 million Kentuckians. Once we get the first 2.5 million Kentuckians vaccinated, we will remove capacity restrictions for venues, events, and businesses that hold 1,000 or fewer patrons. Uh, that's every restaurant, bar, music venue, a funeral home, a retail, wedding space, event spaces, public pools, grocery stores, country clubs, museums, festivals, distilleries, and so many more. Uh, virtually everything um, other than schools um, with a thousand people or less, uh, you're going to see an end of those capacity restrictions. So there you have it. There is our way out, at least to that degree, which is significant. Two and a half million Kentuckians. Right now, 1.6 million have been vaccinated. And vaccine numbers, as we've been following now for the past few weeks, however, have started to dwindle. Still getting about 100, 125,000 vaccinated every week. Those numbers are smaller each and every week while appointments are going unused here in McGoffa County and Johnson County and across the state. So if we want to get out of this and get back to some sort of normalcy, and that is a big way, you need to encourage everyone you know to get any one of the vaccines they can as soon as possible and to start filling up those appointments. The governor says that there are enough open appointments to get to that 2.5 million mark in just 3.5 weeks. That's all it would take. He says it's quite unlikely that everyone's going to instantly go and fill up all those spots each and every day for the next 3.5 weeks, but it is possible it could be done, and should it be done, those restrictions would be lifted. Also in the governor's address today, of course, numbers for today, the positivity rate still continuing to increase back up above 3, 3.16. There were 270 cases announced for today and seven new deaths. Those numbers are still having us in a bit of an incline from the past several weeks or an increase, but still 
firmly in a plateau. But the only way to stay there is to get the vaccine and to get at least two and a half million Kentuckians to do it. Also on the note of COVID-19, Paul B. Hall Regional Medical Center has been named a COVID-19 vaccination center by Governor Bashir. With the designation, Paul B. Hall will be administering the Johnson & Johnson one-dose vaccine, accelerating the hospital's efforts to immunize the community against COVID-19. To schedule an appointment, call 789-0042. Vaccines will be given to those 18 years of age and older walk-in appointments will not be accepted, so please call again 789-0042. On to the subject of another one of our medical providers. Today, the Appalachian Regional Healthcare Board of Trustees introduced its latest president and CEO. This following the retirement of its previous CEO. Today, ARH announcing Miss Holly Harris Phillips, who has currently been serving, most currently been serving, or recently as the Vice President for Corporate Strategy and the Chief Strategy Officer for the healthcare system. Making Phillips the first woman in the healthcare system's 65 year history to take the helm as the president and chief executive officer. ARH is the largest provider of care and the single largest employer in southeastern Kentucky and the third largest private employer in southern West Virginia. Holly will assume this position in the month of May next month, replacing retiring president and CEO Mr. Joe Grossman. Phillips has been with ARH for 19 years and is considered by those on the board to stand out as a strong, well-respected leader with a passion for improving access to care for the people of Central Appalachia with a hands-on approach that will serve her well in her new role. Through my wife working at ARH now for going on 25 years, uh, through my sitting on the local advisory commission at the same hospital, Morgan County ARH, uh, I have met Miss. Phillips. Uh, we've had a few conversations work-wise, and I think that good things are about to happen for ARH as a result of their selection. We wish her all the best, and I have a good suspect that we'll be able to talk to her in an interview, maybe not super soon, but uh, sometime down the line. With that said, I'll be right back. There's no missing that this is the new McFarland and Tinker Law Office location on the Mountain Parkway in the former Farm Bureau building in Sagersville, just like there's no denying that their nearly 60 years of legal experience has won their clients millions and millions of dollars in disability, auto accident, and wrongful death cases. It's where your case matters to you and to us. McFarland and Tinker, also Griffey approved. From birthdays to ball games and anything in between, feed your crowd with a Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe Party Platter piled high with both hot and spicy and crispy buffalo wings, fried pickles, jumbo breast strips, mini corn dogs, and jalapeno poppers, all for just $36.99. And here's a little tip. Always get extra mini corn dogs when you get the party platter at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe. And remember, you can always call ahead 349-3626. Frazier's Prater Drug Store is Sagersville and McGoffin County's oldest firearms dealer, and they're working hard to keep what you're looking for in stock and at unbeatable prices, regardless of the pandemic. For example, in stock right now, Ruger American Rifles in 243, 270, and 7 millimeter, starting at just 349. That's $100 off MSRP, and they sell everything in the store less than MSRP every day. Like this Mossberg Patriot 243, Glock 44s, a big punch in a small package with this Bond Arms 45 410, and more. All ready to go today at Fraser's Prater Drugstore in downtown Sagersville. All pro, and you'll always get a perfectly finished project backed by decades of experience and thousands of satisfied customers. Always with the best prices on everything from small to large remodels, bathrooms to kitchens to entire homes, or turnkey new construction on everything from garages, homes to retail space. And seamless gutters, too. 
And All Pro still offers 0% financing for up to 18 months and long term low interest rates on those big projects. For an estimate, call this family owned business today. Several serious arrests to report to you that have taken place since I saw you last. One attempted murder charges related to a story that I broke on this past Friday. But first, a couple of calls of emergency just today. A two-vehicle accident just a short time ago. That was prefaced, however, by this vehicle fire in a very hard-to-access spot distance-wise for any fire department. I'm speaking of the Route 30 area, very near the McGoffin, Breathitt County line and the Horseshoe Curve. That is where this truck, which was coming from Lexington, headed to Jackson, carrying a load of shingles. Well, that's where it was when a malfunction, some sort of a fire beginning in the engine compartment, quickly spread to the rest of the tractor and then onto the trailer and then on to some of the shingles which were being hauled. The Middle Fork Volunteer Fire Department responding as well. This is in their area. They the closest, but still some distance away. Also assisted by the District 3 Fire Department. We're finally able to get the blaze under control. There were several of the pallets of shingles still intact, which were offloaded onto another truck. I think at least two or three did burn, as you can see in another picture that I have here. But the truck, a serious, serious loss as well as possible damage to the roadway that was still undetermined from the heat of the fire, only to be determined after the removal of the rig itself, which had not taken place when, of course, these pictures were taken. No injuries. I am glad two report were reported for the driver or any of the, one, any of the individuals responding to the blaze. Just a short time after this, there was a two-vehicle accident that happened on Route 7, about two miles from the Floyd County line, uh, three people were taken to the hospital for non-life-threatening injuries, minor injuries, we do believe. That's all the information I have. It happened just above Gunlock, the rescue squad, and EMS were, had responded. And again, three people out of a two-vehicle crash suffered minor injuries. Still those arrests to come, several of them. Right now, I have a new com it's a new week, so obviously I have a new community calendar brought to you by your local Farm Bureau agent, Doug Green. First up, from the McGoffin County Senior Citizen Center, Commodity Day is this Thursday. And it's very important that you pick them up because they do not have any holding room. They're in the process of stripping and waxing floors in the Lloyd M. Hall Community Center. So please make sure you pick up your commodities. They do not have anywhere to put them. Also, just to let you know, the menu for Thursday, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, broccoli, and cauliflower Seniors, it's just a $2 donation. A guest under the age of 60, it's just 4 bucks. As always, they desperately need and can use volunteers to help. So if you've got a little time, go down and get a great meal for just a couple of bucks and help serve one of the most important organizations that we have here in the area. The spring cleanup campaign uh, is technically off this week for the county. They did District 1 last week. They're taking this week to maybe go back and pick up anyone who might have got missed. Then next week, it's District 2. That's the 19th through the 23rd. Then they'll take off another week, the county will, and collect anyone that might have gotten missed. And then District 3 will start the 3rd through the 7th. Call the judge's office if you have any questions. And the Sagersville Citywide Cleanup campaign just runs throughout this entire period. So you've got now and for the next several weeks, if you live in Sagersville, to get those items out and to the curb. Call City Hall if you need any help or information. With that said, you know it goes without saying how you get announcements on the show. Birthdays and anniversaries too. Send them when you can. And we also print anniversaries, birthdays, and birth announcements in the Sagersville Independent for free, but send those to Joe, J-O, at SagersvilleIndependent.com. We begin this week with a number of funeral services, which is how we've ended and began the past several weeks, to be honest, very sadly. 62-year-old Bruce Hall of Sagersville passed away on Friday, the son of the late Willie and Edith Tackett Hall. He's survived by sons William Hall and Jackie Lee May, daughter Rachel Keyes, and two sisters, Lucille Hall and Patricia May, and 16 grandkids and two great-grandkids. Bruce, as I mentioned and referred to in last week's obituary, is preceded in death by his wife, Deborah Sue Jordan Hall, as well as two sons, Michael Neil May and Shannon Eugene Hall, but his wife, who was just laid to rest on Friday. Funeral services for Bruce will be held tomorrow at 1 from the McGoffin County Funeral Home 
Burial will follow at the Bluegrass Cemetery. Friends can visit the funeral home Monday after 6. Tonight after 6, rather, up until 9, and then before tomorrow's services. And our dear Uncle Junior will be laid to rest following services this Wednesday. Miller to Preston Jr., Junior was 89 and a resident of Chillicothe, Ohio, but he had come back and lived here in Sagersville for a number of years before returning to Chill- Chillicothe. He was the son of Millard Sr. and Pearly Caudle Preston. And his wife, Myrtle Gullett Preston, preceded him in death. He survived by his daughter, Rhonda Lynn Murray, and sons, Curtis Lee and Daryl Preston, sisters, Dorothy Howard and Mildred Jenkins, as well as seven grandkids and 15 great-grandkids. And again, funeral services for Uncle Junior are going to be held this Wednesday at 1 from the Sagersville Funeral Home. The family will welcome friends Wednesday morning after 10 up until the services begin. And 68-year-old Deborah Howard of Sagersville passed away yesterday at the UK Medical Center. Arrangements are still being made by the family and to be announced soon by the Sagersville Funeral Home. With the power to bring us together even when we're far apart, we keep families connected. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. Always the time for new beginnings and redecorating, or at least adding a few new favorite pieces to your home decor. And the Seasonal Shop has just finished resetting their entire home decor section with all new merchandise. It's all there. Classic favorites, new trends, and the unusual pieces that can set your decor apart from everyone else. Farmhouse, timeless blue and white pottery, natural woods, beaded accents, bohemian, bees, lemons, copper, white pottery, and equestrian, it's all there. And it's all there with local delivery, layaway, and curbside pickup. It's the only place like it, the Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. Get absolutely every mile you can out of the season with great deals right now at Conley Tire in Staffordsville. Get up to $70 back on a set of new Coopers or new Hankooks, up to $120 back on new Michelins, up to $150 on new Goodyears, where you can keep your stimulus money and drive safe with six months no interest at Conley Tire in Staffordsville and at ConleyTire.net. Fred and his staff at Parkway Pharmacy are proud to announce the newest member of their team and yours, pharmacist Dustin Jones, who's actually the grandson of Janet and the late Paul Jones of Dixie in Salyersville. And his addition of over 12 years of experience in inpatient and outpatient services gives you unmatched availability and care when it comes to your health and medication. Parkway Pharmacy, where you can always talk to a pharmacist when you need one. Now, for several arrests that have taken place, one related to that situation that I first broke to you on this past Friday on Big Branch off of 114 will begin, however, with the arrest of a Sagersville woman for public intoxication, trafficking, and other charges, which also include shoplifting from a Sagersville business, a few dollars in merchandise when she had over $150 on her person. Saturday morning around 1.30, Sagersville City Police arrested 43-year-old Deborah Reisner at the Speedy's gas station here in Sagersville across from the Lee's Famous Recipe. It was then that they were called to a report of a shoplifter inside the store, and when they got there, they found 43-year-old Deborah Reisner still inside and on her way out. They also noticed something visible in her shirt hidden in her bra that later turned out to be a pill bottle with only two Suboxone pills in it. That bottle had been filled just hours earlier and should have had 28 at the time that it was filled. Also a baggie with a white powdery substance that they thought was methamphetamine. They also found a pill holder as well that contained a number of Xanax inside her bag, inside the vehicle. Several loaded needles that all tested positive for methamphetamine. Empty needles, spoons, snort, straws, rubber tourniquets. There were also three pill bottles belonging to a person from Paintsville as well. She had shoplifted some $3.58 worth of items from the store while having $156 in cash on her and was charged with PI of drugs, public intoxication, trafficking in a controlled substance first offense, 
possession of a controlled substance, third degree, possession of a legend drug, possession of a controlled substance in the first for the meth, drug paraphernalia, shoplifting, and prescription not in its original container. Another arrest took place over the weekend since I saw you last, actually uh, Friday afternoon at uh, around 3 o'clock on Stony Brook Drive in Johnson County. That's where the Johnson County Sheriff's Department arrested Danny Ray Clark, charging him with driving on a DUI suspended license, first offense, and criminal mischief in the first degree. This reportedly related to an incident that took place the day before in Johnson County when he drove to a BP, the BP on Route 3, and then just started attacking a person's vehicle. Uh, the person saying they had no idea who he was, what he was doing while they were attacking his car, but he struck the side mirror, breaking it off, uh, the driver's side window, doing damage to it, the windshield wipers, the antenna, just a, literally attacking the vehicle with his bare hands, causing over $1,000 in damage, and the ve vehicle's owner having no idea why the, he was destroying their vehicle. There was at least three witnesses who saw it. It was all captured on video, which I don't have, and he was arrested for, again, DUI, driving on a DUI suspended license and criminal mischief in the first degree. Next, the arrest of a John Darren Collins of Red Creek Road in Pikeville. This from the McGoffin County Sheriff's Department. This was yesterday morning around 844. Police responding to a domestic situation on Mash Fork here in McGoffin County where a victim stated that her ex-boyfriend had come home from being released from jail just hours later and when he walked in there was an argument uh, he busted up furniture knocking items off of the refrigerator and the like and then he got a gun he also wrenched that semi-automatic pistol back while standing in the bedroom pointing at her and her children he was located in the children's bedroom when authorities had arrived the handgun was found underneath a mattress that he was sitting on he was charged with wanton endangerment in the first degree and taken to the Big Sandy Jail. Robert E. Salyer of Falcon was arrested by the Sheriff's Department over the weekend Saturday, right around uh, 8 o'clock that night, about 13 miles west of Sagersville. The police receiving a call of a stolen vehicle earlier in the day. They found that vehicle located on Alsop Road off of Cow Creek in a field and Salyer was near the vehicle. That's the only information we have. He was charged with receiving stolen property under $10,000 and public intoxication. The last address, last arrest tonight goes back to the incident that I had limited details for you on Friday, but a McGoffin County man of Big Branch on 114 near the Trestle, Stephen M. Miller, charged with wanton endangerment in the first degree murder, attempted murder, excuse me, divest, with a domestic violence attachment. He was arrested the following day. Actually, yes, he was arrested on Sunday, my apologies, after the Friday incident. The Sheriff's Department got a call that there had been a shooting on Big Branch, and when they got there, they found a female victim who had been shot, but just a graze, fortunately, that wouldn't require any serious medical attention. She was alert and walking when they arrived, stated that Miller was the one who she'd been arguing with. She went to visit a relative nearby within walking distance and he walked in and sat down across from her and then pulled a nine millimeter handgun from a shoulder holster and shot her while she and the relative were sitting on the same couch the bullet just grazed her fortunately went through the couch went through the wall went outside and ricocheted off a rock police were trying to recover that bullet when i left the scene he fled on foot but was arrested on big branch over the course of the weekend and now faces serious charges of attempted murder and wanton endangerment in the first degree and a new week means a new forecast and that's what's going to wrap it up for us tonight a bit cloudy a bit breezy and a bit cool to the start today might have sent some folks uh, back into the closet to get something a little bit warmer, but it did uh, it did perk up quite nicely. The clouds parted, the sun came out, and we did see the upper 60s. And here, here's what we expect to see for the rest of your evening and the seven-day. Well, we're going to be on the cooler side for a few days. We've even got a, a couple of nights in, well, yeah, in the 30s, one daytime high. Technically, in the 50s, we might get into the 60s by Thursday afternoon. We'll see. Let's start off with tonight, though. Mostly clear skies, a low of 42, and keeping that wind 
uh, west northwesterly five to eight, maybe up to 10, 15, 18 miles per hour or so. It's been a bit breezy today, but the good news is it. The sun finally came out, and it wasn't quite as chilly as it was, but, man, it was for several, several hours this morning. Again, we're going to continue to see those mostly clear skies tonight that we've seen throughout today. We will tomorrow see clouds back on the increase, though. We'll get close to 70, 69 tomorrow, increasing clouds and a 20% chance of showers after 1 tomorrow. You can bump that up to about a 40% chance later on tomorrow afternoon and evening and during the overnight for your Tuesday, a low of 48. And that system puts us into the lower 60s midweek. Wednesday, a 30% chance of showers, mainly after 11 or so in that morning. High of only 63, lows that night in the upper 30s, and still about a 20% chance of showers that evening. Then we clear up. That cold front's in and gone. And Thursday, mostly sunny and 59. Friday, mostly sunny and 62, with a bit of an improvement temperature-wise, but just hovering right there. Low 60s for days, yeah. Thursday, 59 and sunny, and then like you see there, 62 mostly sunny on Thursday, or Friday, I'm sorry, 42 that night and mostly cloudy. Even though we have partly sunny skies and 61 Saturday, we've got a 20% chance of showers in the mid-afternoon. Same for Sunday, almost ditto for Sunday, and uh, by Monday, I think we'll at least dry up and see 65 and mostly sunny. And that's just one day in. I hope to see you here for the next. Until then, enjoy your evening. And thank you for watching.